My friends, we've all heard the stories, the jokes indeed, about the person who finds the genie's bottle and is given a wish. So one day a man spotted a genie, uh, a lamp by the roadside. He picked it up and rubbed it and the genie appeared. I'll grant you your dearest wish, the genie said. And the man thought for a moment and said, I want a spectacular job, a job that no man has ever succeeded in doing, a job that no man has ever been brave enough to undertake. Done, said the genie, and boom, you're a housewife. The moral of these stories, as you know, is always to be careful for what you ask, for what you wish. In the heart of every woman and man lies a hunger, a yearning for love and fulfillment. If St. Augustine is right, this longing can only be satisfied by the God who speaks to us in his word. Central to the Old Testament hope is the human desire to see God and to live in God's presence. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is thirsting for you, my God. When can I enter and see the face of God? Now, if we look at the two readings of our liturgy today, we find an interesting sequence. We begin with an Ethiopian who is clearly searching. He's coming from Jerusalem and is pondering the text written by the prophet Isaiah, but he doesn't really understand what it means. He is a seeker after truth, after God. And on his way, he meets Philip, who throws light on the word of God that has intrigued him. And then, having been touched by God's word, the man asks for baptism. Reading the word, proclaiming the word, leads to baptism. And then in the Gospel today, Jesus speaks of Eucharist. The bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. The search for God's word leads from word to baptism, and then from baptism to Eucharist. For many of us who were baptized as infants, the sequence was different. Indeed, we only began to read and understand the word after receiving baptism and probably even after receiving our first communion. During Eastertide, the Church asks us to renew our baptismal promises, to reflect on the new life that is given each one of us, and to recognize the dignity that is ours as daughters and sons of God who are born from baptismal water. As Eucharistic communion is impossible in these pandemic days, the Word of God is there to nourish, to nourish us. The Word of God is there to feed us. And like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, whose hearts burned within them as the scriptures were open to them, like the Ethiopian who delights to find truth in God's Word, that same promise is held out to you and to me to know God's Word to have our hearts burn within. To see the face of God, to live in God's presence, to know love, to dwell in love, to have the deepest yearnings, the intimate longings of our hearts suited forever. One day, a man spotted a lamp by the roadside. He picked it up and an angel appeared. I'll grant you your dearest wish, the angel said. The man thought for a moment, and then he said, I want a heart to understand how to discern between good and evil, to be wise and true, to be at peace within myself and with others, no matter what comes my way. Done, said the angel. You will know God's word in your heart. Who are you? the man asked. I am Gabriel, 
the angel of God who brings good news. Oh, said the man, echoing Mary, as his heart burned within him, oh, let it be done to me according to your word.